Hey there and welcome to the channel. Today we're diving into a topic that's close to all of our hearts. Well, our stomachs anyway. Food. More specifically, we're talking about seven dangerous grocery products that you should never stockpile. You might be thinking, stockpiling? What's wrong with being prepared? And hey, I get it. Having a well-stocked pantry can be a lifesaver when life gets busy or unexpected events occur. But here's the thing. Some foods are best bought fresh and consumed relatively quickly. Why? Well, certain products, if kept for too long, can actually become health hazards. We're talking about things like bacterial growth, harmful chemical changes, and even an increased risk of chronic diseases. So let's ditch the fear-mongering and get into the facts about what to watch out for on your next grocery run. Let's kick things off with a staple in many pantries canned goods. Now, I'm not saying all canned goods are bad, in fact, they can be a convenient and affordable source of essential nutrients, but, and this is a big but, many canned goods are loaded with sodium. See, manufacturers often add a hefty dose of salt to act as a preservative and enhance flavor, while a little sodium here and there is perfectly fine, consuming too much sodium on a regular basis can have some serious consequences for your health. We're talking about an increased risk of high blood pressure which, if left unchecked, can lead to heart disease, stroke, and kidney problems. And the thing is, it's surprisingly easy to go overboard on sodium without even realizing it, especially if you're relying heavily on canned goods. Think about it. Canned soups, beans, vegetables, even fruits, they can all harbor a surprising amount of hidden sodium. So, what's the solution? Well, first and foremost, check those nutrition labels. Pay close attention to the sodium content and try to choose low-sodium or no-salt-added varieties whenever possible. And remember, rinsing canned beans and vegetables under running water can also help to remove some of the excess sodium. But beyond that, try to limit your overall reliance on canned goods. Opting for fresh or frozen alternatives whenever possible can make a big difference in your sodium intake and overall health. Trust me, your future self will thank you. Our next contender is a bit of a controversial one, preservatives. Now, preservatives get a bad rap, and to be fair, some of them aren't exactly health foods. But the truth is, preservatives play a vital role in our food system. They help to prevent spoilage, extend shelf life, and ensure that our food remains safe to eat. Without preservatives, we'd be facing a whole lot more cases of food poisoning. However, and this is where things get tricky, some preservatives have been linked to potential health problems, especially when consumed in large quantities over long periods. We're talking about things like artificial sweeteners, artificial colors, and certain types of preservatives like nitrates and sulfites. Now, the research on these additives is ongoing, and the jury is still out on exactly how harmful they may be. But many experts believe that it's best to err on the side of caution and limit our exposure to these potentially problematic ingredients. So, what can you do? Again, it all comes down to reading those labels carefully. Become familiar with common preservatives and their potential health effects. Look for products that use natural preservatives like vinegar, salt, or sugar, or better yet, choose fresh, whole foods whenever possible. Remember, knowledge is power when it comes to making informed choices about the food you eat. All right, let's move on to a category that probably doesn't need much introduction when it comes to potential dangers, raw meat. Now, I'm a big fan of a good steak or chicken stir-fry, but it's crucial to remember that raw meat can harbor harmful bacteria that can cause food poisoning. We're talking about things like salmonella and E. coli, which can lead to symptoms like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and in severe cases, even death. And while proper cooking can kill off these harmful bacteria, the real danger lies in cross-contamination. If you're not careful, those bacteria from raw meat can easily spread to other surfaces in your kitchen like cutting boards, countertops, and utensils, putting you and your family at risk. So, what's the best way to handle raw meat? First and foremost, always store it properly. Keep raw meat refrigerated at 40 degrees Fahrenheit or below, and store it separately from other foods, preferably on the bottom shelf of your refrigerator to prevent any accidental drips. When it comes to preparing raw meat, be sure to use separate cutting boards and utensils, and wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water before and after handling it. And finally, never, ever rinse raw meat under running water. This actually increases the risk of spreading bacteria around your kitchen. Remember, when it comes to raw meat, a little caution goes a long way in preventing foodborne illnesses. Next up, let's talk about a seemingly innocent food that can actually be a breeding ground for bacteria prepackaged salads. 
Now, I get the appeal of these convenient salads. They're pre-washed, chopped, and ready to eat, making them a seemingly healthy and effortless meal or side dish. But here's the catch. The moisture trapped inside those plastic containers creates the perfect environment for bacteria to multiply. And because these salads are often made with a variety of ingredients, the risk of cross-contamination is even higher. One study found that pre-packaged salads can harbor up to 200 times more bacteria than a whole head of lettuce. And while not all of these bacteria are harmful, some, like Listeria monocytogenes, can cause serious illness especially in pregnant women, older adults, and people with weakened immune systems. So, what's the takeaway? While prepackaged salads can be a convenient option in a pinch, it's important to be mindful of their short shelf life and potential for bacterial growth. Always check the expiration date and avoid buying salads that are wilted, slimy, or have an off odor. And if you do choose to buy prepackaged salads, be sure to eat them within a day or two of purchasing them. Or better yet, consider making your own salads at home using fresh, whole ingredients. Your taste buds and your gut will thank you. Let's move on to another common culprit when it comes to food spoilage dairy products. Milk, cheese, yogurt, these are all perishable foods that require refrigeration and have a relatively short shelf life. And while a little bit of sour milk in your coffee might not kill you, consuming expired dairy products can increase your risk of food poisoning. Why? Well, dairy products provide an ideal environment for the growth of bacteria like Salmonella, E. coli, and Campylobacter. These bacteria can cause a range of unpleasant symptoms, including nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and abdominal cramps. And in some cases, food poisoning from dairy products can even be life-threatening. So, how can you tell if your dairy products have gone bad? First and foremost, always check the expiration date. But also be on the lookout for changes in appearance, texture, and smell. Milk that has gone bad will often have a sour odor and may appear chunky or curdled. Cheese that has gone bad may have a moldy appearance or a strong, ammonia-like smell. And yogurt that has gone bad may have a watery consistency or a sour taste. If you're ever in doubt, it's always best to err on the side of caution and toss it out. Remember, when it comes to dairy products, fresh is always best. Let's talk about a category of food that you might not think of as being particularly dangerous grains. Now, Grains themselves are generally safe and nutritious, in fact, they're a staple food for billions of people around the world. But, here's the thing, grains, if not stored properly, can be susceptible to spoilage and infestation. We're talking about things like mold, insects, and rodents, all of which can pose serious health risks. Mold, in particular, can produce mycotoxins, which are toxic substances that can cause a range of health problems, including respiratory issues, allergic reactions, and even cancer. Insects, while not always harmful, can contaminate food with bacteria and other pathogens. And rodents, well, they're just generally unsanitary and can spread diseases. So, how can you protect your grains from these unwanted guests? First and foremost, always store grains in airtight containers. This will help to keep moisture out and prevent the growth of mold. It's also a good idea to store grains in a cool, dry place, as warmth and humidity can accelerate spoilage. And finally, be sure to inspect your grains regularly for any signs of infestation. If you see any bugs, webbing, or droppings, it's best to toss the entire container. Remember, when it comes to storing grains, a little prevention goes a long way. Cooking oils can go rancid over time. Rancidity occurs due to heat, light, and oxygen. Rancid oil has a stale, metallic, or paint-like odor and taste. It produces harmful free radicals. These can lead to chronic diseases. Use your senses to check for rancidity. Store oil in a cool, dark place. Fresh is always best. Thanks for sticking with me through this culinary adventure. I know we covered a lot, but hopefully you found it helpful. Remember, being prepared is important, but so is being mindful of what we're stockpiling. While some foods can last for months or even years, others are best bought in smaller quantities and consumed relatively quickly. By being aware of the potential risks and following these simple tips, you can ensure that your pantry is stocked with safe, nutritious, and delicious food. Don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful, and subscribe to the channel for more informative content. Until next time, stay safe, eat well, and I'll catch you in the next video.